Okay, let's go. Got it. Okay. Got it. Right. So just to introduce myself, I am the arm wrestling artist. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> cool. Well, this is uh, Travis Graham, who um, I discovered on YouTube, like I have discovered so many people. And uh, he is a, a natural body builder, whatever. I would say that well, Wait, like a know? natural strength athlete, my, my main thing, I, I'm going through phases right now, but my main thing has always been powerlifting. And then to a degree, yes, like the physique component just comes with that as long as yeah. your diet doesn't totally suck and you, you really take advantage of these natural hacks and everything. And then, as you know, recently I'm getting into arm wrestling. Which is good when uh, we're going to talk about your matches and we're also going to talk about PEDs and, you know, yeah. a lot of questions around the use of them and the possibility of not using them. You, you're uh, talking about, can you be strong in your forties without PEDs and stuff like that? And I'm 45. So I'm also at an age where you're like, ah, so we'll yeah. just talk a little bit. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I was, I was just going to agree with you there because yeah, I, that's uh, a lot of my things and a lot of my clients are, uh, yeah, like guys sort of my age, it's sort of like the best clients because it's, it's what I am. So I know what their, you know, their struggles are and yeah. like their question and just to be, and I always tell people, I go, I can get you to like where I am because I've done it. Yeah. And yeah. But if you want to be like a like a pro bodybuilder or something like that, where um, you know obviously in, in that that sport, PEDs are are necessary to compete at the top level. But on the other hand, there's also natural bodybuilding contests too. Now they don't look nearly as monstrous or or anything like that. But uh, yes, there's there's a place for natural strength sports in this world, hundred percent. Yeah, and. I've been watching, reading a lot of uh, comments on arm wrestling forums. Um, they also make me think there's a, a quite a lot of people that that would like to see more natural arm wrestlers too, uh, because you know they quickly say, "Ah, but they're just just to the hilt or whatever." Yes. Uh, and and it's, uh, it just muddies the water a bit. You know, where is their expertise coming from? And, um, but on the other hand, I've listened to, for example, John Brzezink talking about that perhaps this bulk can be detrimental to your performance on the table. PEDs would, are, are all about, you know, blowing up those muscle bellies and getting a little extra water and a little bit extra strength. I don't know if that makes a whole hell of a lot of difference. And, and sometimes I feel like it's a, uh, um, a negative, right? I mean, um, you got guys that can that are, aren't on anything that can arm wrestle over and over and over again and don't ever seem to get blown up and and have great endurance, you know. And they they take a few little things to try to boost themselves up, and all of a sudden they it's like being on a high dose of creatine. And they one match and they're like they're like pillow boys and you know numbed up and they can't arm wrestle anymore. So I don't I I don't I don't know what the you know the, the perfect formula is. I'm not sure anybody does. Well, obviously some people have think that other people have figured it out, but I, I, yeah. it, my, I, I, I don't. Uh, so, you know, it's quite interesting just to, to talk about yeah. this with somebody who knows more than me about this. So that's those two things I'd actually like to just hear about Saturday, because that is your first proper competition. Is that right? Or. Yes, that's right. So, I mean, what a, what a first competition. I mean, the standards was set pretty high. Because it's, um, I guess that the East versus West is, it's like an event, right? There was like yeah. live bands and music and you're drinking beers too. And it was uh, in Toronto, there's this place called the Elma Combo. Uh, if you watch the video, you saw, but it's a famous place where, where you know, the Rolling Stones have played, Dave Bowie, all, all sorts of things. Great, uh, great venue. Um, but yeah, that, that was my first one. And uh won my first two and then I lost my next two, so 
Yeah, but actually the the fact that you won any is actually pretty impressive because anyone who's entering that sort of thing will have a certain will have a standard um that's relatively formidable. There's amateur division and then pro division and I went in the, in the in the amateurs. Okay. Yeah, of course. So that was of course. But, but still um yeah, I mean I've only been really training for like a few months, I, I guess I would say. So I was, uh, I was very pleased yeah. with that. But what surprised me was the the last guy you pulled against, the one that you got slaughtered by. He just looked like a schoolboy. <laughs> How did that feel? They were, they were calling him the baby face killer. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. Right, totally. because he is. He's like pretty young, and then yeah, he just. Uh, he got good hand position on me and it was it's basically what i did to the first guy he did to me yeah so um the reason maybe it's interesting for me also to know what it is that brought you into arm wrestling what what uh, did you discover and i'll just start with my story was that i was starting to do climbing you know bouldering and yeah. then there's a, a guy called Magnus Mitbu, don't know if you've heard of him, a Norwegian climber who has a YouTube channel and he had Devin Larratt on as a guest. Oh, wow. I, I and I was it. like, no. <laughs> and I was like, okay, who's this guy? He's got charisma, that's for sure. And so I followed Devin Larratt into the sweaty field of arm wrestling uh, <laughs> and watched him. And then I discovered Schoolboy so I tried to follow Schoolboy, and then I discovered John Brzezink. And yes. the video that I saw with John, he was, you know, he's wearing glasses, a sort of baggy dad shirt, as I call it, and a little bit gray and a big grin on his face. And he was beating all the young guys at this after pool. And this was during his retirement, so he really was not looking very big. And I was like, what the heck? So I Googled his strange name and found his match with Dennis Aplenkov. And, yes. you know, what the heck? I was just looking at it and I was like, this is wrong. The little guy is beating the big guy. Yeah. And yeah. I love contrasts. I love contrasts. John just has that um, reputation as being this, the monster slayer, giant killer. Yeah. and. That was on display there. I couldn't believe what I saw. In fact, I almost didn't want it to be true at, at, at first. It just it just didn't compute in my mind. <laughs> but then I ended up getting hooked on John Brzezink. And uh, I've written a rap about it, actually, so that can be found on my YouTube channel. <laughs> you are kidding me. <laughs> you do a lot of cool, cool stuff. I just think he's he's such a contrast to his world. And he's probably created... Um, I think he's probably been instrumental in creating arm wrestling as this as this place where it's actually cool to be gentle somehow. I mean, there's I think he has a lot more influence on this combat sport um, than he's maybe aware of and even has tried to have. And I, I just find that fascinating. Yeah, you hear him speak and he's very soft spoken. And you know the movie Over the Top with yeah. Sylvester Stallone. Uh, um, Devin Lara said this, that that was based on John Brzezink's life, in, in part. At the end of the, the video, you can see him pumping the air. And then you're like, OK, that arm is actually pretty defined and developed. <laughs> Don't know if you noticed yeah. that. Yes, but yeah. But uh, he doesn't flaunt it, though, right? No, he's just. He's just like a kind of unique uh, character. And that's partly why I want to do this uh, biographical portrait of him. So I hope at some point I can, um, but it really requires communication directly with him because I don't want to paint him as I see him or as the community see him, but how, uh, you know, with his influence at least on, on how he is portrayed. Anyway, we're getting a little bit off off yeah, track. Let's get back. So let me hear. Let me hear. What is it that brought you to arm wrestling? And then we'll get onto the store, the stuff about PEDs. Um, uh, I, I think it just sort of came up in my YouTube feed randomly, and this was during COVID. 
um, <laughs> a couple of years ago um, that I that I got into like watching it again. I wasn't training for it, like I said, not till till recently, but, but it was through COVID. And then like the big guy was Canadian. It was Devin Larratt. So that's always you know we're not really um, known as a as a huge uh, athletic um, or, or or strength. Um, country we have a, a few guys um but yeah when I when I saw that that sort of stoked me and like you said Devin Lair definitely has like a personality <laughs> so we brought it up. and yeah. Uh, yeah and it just it got me back into it because I used to arm wrestle with my grandfather and I think everyone used to arm wrestle at some point and it was just so especially if you watch the wall matches right the WAL matches and they were at a time and again this was COVID so like you're not allowed to go to the bars and all this stuff and there's these matches and they were at the bars and it was a party and it was, it was there was such there was such freedom around the event that I was I was I was like man this is everything I want to do right now <laughs> I, I, you know what I mean and if, if I were to think of arm wrestling it would be like this so I, I went into the WAL YouTube uh, channel and just started watching a ton of that. And then I was like, I wonder if I bought a table, if anyone would do it. So I bought a table for the gym and then a few people just started fooling around and we were just fooling around. We weren't, didn't know any of the martial art moves of the hand or anything like that. <laughs> and then it's like anything. I'm like, I wonder if I uh, can go and, uh, and actually test myself and see just how I do. So it's like anyone who maybe starts in a gym and they're just, they're working out. So they're doing squats, bench press and deadlift just to work out. And like, oh, you want to test your strength? Well, enter a powerlifting meet. So um, yeah, we were arm wrestling and then we were also doing a lot of strict curl stuff. Now I was like, I wonder how strong my arm is. So then I entered this East versus West qualifier. It came up and uh, yeah, but that's that's how it was. Is I was I was at home watching a lot of YouTube and went down <laughs> the YouTube and it just came up and uh, that's how I got it. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we get to the questions that I sent you about yeah. PED use. So it's been something that you've you've uh, made maybe part of your calling, if you like, you know, to just encourage people to to trust their own uh, natural strengths and and use natural means to get stronger so do you want to tell me just the background to to this choice yeah i mean so i'm 46 now and yeah. and you know coming up if someone's on peds we just used to call them steroids back then because that's just what you call them right um uh someone's on steroids it was like a big thing like oh that guy's on steroids or that guy's juicing or whatever so most people weren't and nowadays it's and especially with social media and everything and it's just so widely accepted and that even Larry Wheels was you know telling people exactly what they take and people are like here's my stack here's what yeah. I take and it's just sort of so accepted but um the, the reason I I never went down that that route is primarily I was a big nature boy I was a big nature boy so um like spend uh time in nature uh outside of that and I also was a holistic or became a a holistic lifestyle coach and my teacher was a guy named Paul Check, and uh of the Czech Institute and he was just sort of maybe he was he was pretty jacked actually he's probably about five foot eight 180 pounds and lean and he could lift, uh, there's a picture of him lifting a 180 pound dumbbell over his head um, but like with one arm. And like, he's all about being natural. And it's all like, he taught me that if you can harness the power of nature, then you will not need steroids. Unless your ego is such that you want to surpass um, the, the natural ceiling. But it's like for most people, um, if, if you if you can harness the power, and he has six fundamental principles, if you can harness the power of um, nutrition, hydration, 
sleep, exercise, and, and stress management, I've narrowed it down to five, um, and really harness that, then you will have energy, a physique, performance in whatever you want, mind strength, but it could be anything. Um, and you will be more than happy with it. So that's, that's sort of my, that, that's what I encourage to do. I'm not by any means like a PED expert or anything, because actually I, I research the natural stuff, right? And I've had friends growing up that did go on steroids. Uh, a couple of them did have pretty serious complications. And when they would come off, they would say, I've, and, and my, I've had some, some friends that, <laughs> that have done some, some drugs over the years. Um, I was never one of them. I don't know why I just steered away, but they're like, out of all the drugs I did, that was the most addicting for sure. Mm. Because it's something you walk around with, right? You walk around into your identity. When you stop, it's like, I, they said, it's like, I lost my identity. Mm. So it was really hard to get off. Um, is the identity connected to the the actual physical shape that you are during on cycle or or what yeah it's like well yeah they walk around and we're young men at, at this point too right so if mm. you're in your like 20s um you're in your 30s and like you, you gotta you gotta point to prove or maybe that they because they were just delinquents because we were just <laughs> young and stupid but um you know, you want to walk around, you want to be the biggest guy at the bar, you want to impress the chicks, wh whatever mm. it is. Um, so when you, when they would get off of it and they would lose that, they would feel like they, they weren't adequate. They weren't, mm. again, they identified with that persona. Mm -hmm. and that's when I saw this, I'm like, well, that's something I never really want to lose. Mm. Right. Um, and then it just goes to show you, it's not really, it wasn't really them. Mm. And I, I understand that like when you're on PDs and steroids, you still put in the hard work. I, I, I get that, like you work just as hard and everything, but um, it was just never something that, uh, I call it strong, strongevity. I wanted strongevity. I wanted to be strong and built for a long time and not reliant on anything else. It's mm. another one of my quests is to be self-reliant in this world. Mm -hmm. um which is why i tried doing my own uh uh <laughs> maintenance on my vehicle but that backfired <laughs> today <laughs> but having strong longevity um is, is such a free thing because you, you don't you don't need anything and you can do it you can do it if you know how to do those five foundational principles that i was talking about nutrition hydration sleep um movement I go call it move it's exercise and stress management. If you can if you can get those, um, then you, then you, you can do it. And hard ass work, good work ethic. Mm -hmm. You did say earlier that you're not an expert on PEDs. You're kind of more of an expert on uh, natural strength, and that is a pretty important point. Is that I want to hear more the positives of being natural rather than the negatives of being on steroids. That's pretty, pretty good angle, actually. So, yeah. but I, my first question was, can PEDs benefit without hurting your health? Well, with, with PEDs, um, what you have to understand is that all of them and like the most common ones that are being taken, whether it's like Anavar or Anadrol, uh, Winstrol, like whatever, is that they're all growth factors and that all tissues have re receptors to growth factors. So that mm -hmm. this is why you'll see um, things uh, like the enlargement of the heart, arterial walls, thickening, uh, thickening of the blood, even um, all mm. sorts of things, right? Cause things just get bigger and more sturdy because everything has um, receptors to these things. So can you do them without being hurt? It, it's like, it's like anything, um, and, and again, this is just to, to my knowledge of it, but the, the larger the doses and more frequent the doses are, it's just the more damage it, it, it does. Um, I know some people that have done it um, under doctor supervision. This is typically called being TRT now, or testosterone replacement therapy. 
Mm -hmm. All that really is, is, is a low dose of steroids because a lot of, there's one called testosterone cypionate. Um, and there's another one that's very similar to that. I just can't remember it off, off the tip of my tongue right now. But that's when I was a bouncer. That's what all the, the other guys were taking as a mm -hmm. steroid, taking larger doses of it. But yeah, um, things st start to, to happen with that that are not desirable. And it's... Mm -hmm. uh, and, and even the physique, and you can, some people say you can see even, even in Devin Larratt now, his, his head is, is expanding and th things are starting to look weird. <laughs> to that. So is there a safe way to do it? And it, I, I suppose if, if, but like, what's your idea of, of safe? Because there's, there's other things too, like the, like the tendons don't necessarily respond as well as the the muscle tissue mm -hmm. does, well, with the ton of like musculotendinous junction injuries in these guys, like Larry Wheels had it, and then I saw the video of him training a guy, and like the pec tears off. <laughs> you know, is it? I know this is a very simple answer, but it's just like the more you do, the more you're at risk for for all of those things. But mm. like I said, it's addictive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where we came from. That's right. Um, I just wanted to point out, yeah, John Prasink also talked about the fact that if you if you just go like throw a whole bunch of PEDs in your face and you haven't actually built up your tendon strength and your bone strength over a good long period of time, you will quote unquote break your shit. And yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's what you're saying. Yeah. So yeah. it's not it's not a a, a quick fix. <laughs> but as you're talking about this whole idea that that it's addictive, you know, sometimes, and I agree with you that there seems to have become such an accept of this as if, ha oh, ha ha, look at them juicing, look at them getting bigger, and ah, oh, this, this is fun, this is great, but actually, um, you know, if you've been looking at some of the stuff I've done in my art, one of the projects I've been working on is, is about, about drugs and um, addiction, and it's a really dark place to end up, and if if steroids and PEDs are addictive, uh, you there's going to be a, a shadow around it. Even if you don't die from it, there can be other issues. I mean, I say that looking at the likes of Larry Larry Wheels and um, Hermes and um, what's his name. Uh, <laughs> Levan, you know, they all seem to be so nice and happy and exude such a such a good atmosphere around them. So, it, you know, I've I've wondered what what you have to say about that as well. Just this um, the negatives and, well, the, and the positives. Yeah, like look at cocaine. Cocaine is a is a hell of a drug, and you feel great when you're on it, right? Mm -hmm temporarily it raises your mood it elevates you to a, a good place um but same thing frequency and the amount of dosage you're doing um it's gonna it's gonna have eventually it's gonna have a, a negative feedback right it's mm. gonna start to catch up with you and do that thing so it's like can you achieve these states without even going down that road yeah people people need to ask that question more often yeah Rather than just going like, okay, if I take this PED, I know I'm going to get to this place, or it's really highly likely because it's it's such a potent thing that it's a drug, right? So it's very potent that I'm going to get there. Um, but it's it's and that's human is instant gratification. It's one of mm. our, our our detriments, I think, as, as human beings. And patience is all but lost in today's world, in this fast paced world. Um, so I. Again, just to get to get to the back to your question, can you do it safely in in t today's world? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to say yes. Mm -hmm. Part of me doesn't want to say no because yes, obviously the, the, you look at people; they're doing it, they can get off it and stuff like that. But it's all like under doctor supervision. Um, but I don't even want to entertain really like a real answer. But I'm gonna I'm just gonna say no just to give you an answer. Yeah. Because. Um, I think for the everyday person that's watching this, they're not going to have doctor supervision when they do this. Mm -hmm. And um, there's so much more that you should explore. 
naturally first. Yeah. Um, it's funny, you know, when I think back to me as a child, looking at adults and drinking coffee and tea, I saw an addictive nature that I didn't want to be a part of. So even to this day, I don't drink coffee and I only drink herbal tea and very occasionally black tea. But there was something, I didn't know what it was, but there was something there that I didn't want to be a part of. So, you know, addiction and craving and needing something uh, outside of myself was evident to me even as a child. Um, and I didn't want to be a part of it. <laughs> That's a pretty big observation for a child. <laughs> uh, really yeah i mean i can attest to that i i am a coffee drinker and it is it's habitual um you know whether it's doing as much damage to my system as if i was doing a cycle of steroids all the time i don't know but d definitely we all have like little addictions but yeah how big those addictions are and how detrimental <laughs> how well, how really reliant are you on those is uh you know that's another another story yeah so um let me get this opened up yeah so you mentioned trt and uh so with arm wrestling right up until perhaps the the noughties uh pds weren't really part of the game so you know it was natty against natty big natties against small natties you know john brzink again you know great guy was able to beat some of the of those the day monsters like Cleve Dean, which is insane. I mean, the size of that guy. <laughs> like, what? 450 pounds or something crazy like Cleve Dean. Insane. He was more than that. I think he was 600 pounds. So the difference was maybe 400 pounds. <laughs> crazy, it's crazy. Just, just insane. So, but then turn of the century in steps the likes of Alvora and Denis Saplenkov. I think Denis Saplenkov's nickname was Syringe. <laughs> my, <laughs> it's my, oh, no. my guess. Because uh, what's his name? Uh, Taras Ivakin was just talking about the past and he mentioned that and then in walks Syringe and then, uh, you know, we all started to lose or something. So I think it had to kind of be Denis. <laughs> but <laughs> Regardless, yeah. somebody uh, was obviously using a syringe. And then, you know, when when John competed against syringe, <laughs> John was maybe on androgel by that time, which is, you know, like something that you put on your skin. So it must have been a very uh, light testosterone yeah. uh, thing. So... And he has he has said, you know, I don't believe it actually gave me more strength, but it it gave me more motivation and belief that I could could still do this. And and if you're watching pulling John, he does seem kind of deflated, John. You know, mm -hmm. he doesn't seem to have the energy to to do this. So it can be more the the motivation that it increases, but. Your thoughts yeah. on well, that. well, testosterone testosterone does a lot of things and it interacts with a lot of systems. And one of the systems it interacts with is the energy system, right? Just like your alertness and everything like that. So yeah, when so, like a small dose like that, whether it makes you actually stronger, and it depends on how low your testosterone is to begin with, too, and how much of an effect this is going to have. But it's for like that example that you gave with John it's more like yeah maybe not necessarily stronger but it gives you the motivation to use the strength that you are already harnessing mm -hmm. right but that's one of the things with testosterone it's 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 sort of like a, a get up and go I would say it's like drinking a coffee or something <laughs> but motivate motivation and determination is is one of the effects that testosterone has on, on both men and women right mm -hmm. in, in sex drive too like libido right? It just basically like testosterone basically says like kill something or screw something, right? Or like get something done, <laughs> right? Um, so yeah, so that's TR TRT though, but it's it's sort of the same thing. 
um, in terms of should you take it, and this will be my next YouTube video, is, is should you should you take TRT? Mm. And spoiler alert, it's going to be me walking through all the, the protocols that you should do first if you're not doing them. And this is if, uh, if you watch Andrew Huberman or any of these big YouTubers, same thing. They are like, if you're not eating like grass-fed beef and you're not sleeping well and you're drinking low quality water, et cetera, mm. you, are, you are actively suppressing your natural testosterone production. Mm. That you're actively doing that. Those mm -hmm. are all the things. Like if you're doing all those bad things, you should not have high testosterone because it's physiological. Um, you're physiologically suppressing it. So you got to mm -hmm. make corrections first. Then if things don't work out, um, then maybe there is a, a place for it, but use it as a Kickstarter. Make a time. I'm going to be on for three months and I'm going to see if I can really hone in on these, these five foundational principles and create habits while I have the energy to do mm -hmm. it. Because like yeah. I said, it, does. it sort of gives you the energy to do the right things. Right. And then you can wean yourself off with some, um, sometimes they'll wean people off with Clomid or uh, another drug, but sometimes you can just lower the dosage and, and, and come off. But mm -hmm. as far as TRT goes, if that was the question, I'm not sure, but I is a good answer. And actually leads me to a follow up question about both TRT and uh, stronger PDs is that as far as I have understood that you, if you're on them long enough, you actually will have to continue to use them because your body stops producing its own testosterone and becomes reliant on um, the chemicals that you add to your body. And also that, and that's partly because uh, the body has a limit to how much it can can have or, or it accepts. So it's like, oh my goodness, what's going on? I'm gonna have to stop my own production because this is just way too much. Um, so once you've made the decision, if if you do it for a certain length of time, is that right? That then your body's like, ah, I don't need to be here. Yeah, correct. So uh, Dorian Yates, who is a seven, six time Mr. Olympia, um, he's a he's a big phone up telling people like not to do steroids unless it's like you're willing to sacrifice everything because now he is his balls don't work. His balls are broken, essentially. Yeah. So <laughs> he, doesn't do it, he doesn't have any testosterone in his system. So he's ruined his natural testosterone production. Now you can do that too through TRT. Like when you start taking TRT, the, your, your, your balls don't work either because your body has a, a regulating mechanism. So it's, it starts in, in the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus sends um, gonadotropin uh, releasing hormone to the pituitary and then the pituitary sends luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone to the testes and then the testes produce testosterone and then the hypothalamus monitors how much testosterone is in the system and then it basically tells the testes to either keep producing or cool it for now but essentially that's a sort of a long-winded answer to what you said but mm -hmm. that's sort of scientific explanation of why um, your natural testosterone production stops um, even when you do, even when you do low doses of, of even TRT, right? B because the, the doses, the dosage given is a physiological dose, meaning it's, it's a, a dose that, um, like, like that I probably have in my system right now. Right. Um, and, and that's all it wants. So that's why when there's an abuse of these anabolics or steroids, that's why it's hard on the liver as well. Um, because it has to get rid of so much, um, mm. extra. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So your balls don't work, um, whether it's, it's PRT or um, full-on steroid abuse. Mm -hmm. Something to think about. <laughs> I yeah. remember Ryan Bowen talking. It was was talking about that. That you know he was trying for another kid, so he was uh, on something from the the doctors, but was not on the normal sort of all the PDs that he was on for a while. He was just taking something from the doctor to help try and get his um, testicles <laughs> to work yeah. again. Yeah, because you're you're in the Leydig cells of the testicles, they'll produce both testosterone and sperm. So if mm -hmm. you're shutting off that mechanism, if you're shutting off the, the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone, then they're not going to get 
um, either of that stimulus to produce sperm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and yes, if you do it for long enough and you come off of it, they could be like permanently shut down. Yes. Yeah. It's actually made me think a little bit about uh, people who are on, for example, heroin. I don't know if this is true, but if you have been on heroin or other uh, really strong drugs and you try and stop using them, will you just permanently feel low or um, down? I mean, I'm saying on one hand, my my friend who stimulated or inspired me to do this whole exhibition about addiction, he just didn't seem to be able to let go. While another guy who was a total cocaine addict, he is five or six years clean and is, is doing well. So it's maybe different because they don't replace, they don't replace the, they replace maybe the happy hormone, <laughs> the happy feelings. The hot, the, the, the dopamine. And like I said, my friends went through that, right? They, they go through like a little bit of depression. Because um, I'm just getting messages that my battery's running low. And like I said, if everything that happens to me today, um, I don't have my cable. So if, if I die, we'll definitely pick this up soon. Okay, okay. How many minutes have you got? Because then we'll just try to be a bit faster. I got 10%. 10%. <laughs> uh... Are there natural effective alternatives to TRT and hormone replacements for older athletes and I suppose younger athletes? Um, what foods help increase testosterone estrogen naturally? There's, I suppose you could take it as one question and uh, fire away. 100% uh, yes. Um, number one, I think everyone well, first of all, you, you start with the, the basics. So you start with eating food that is not sprayed with neurotoxins and endocrine disruptors. We commonly refer to these as herbicides and pesticides. So if you know what a pesticide is, it kills the bug. How does it kill a bug? Well, it's actually um, a type of nerve gas. So it kills the nervous system of the bug. So then they all die or it disrupts their reproductive, reproductive cycle so that they don't reproduce more. Right now, of course, the thing is, oh, in doses that are so low, it's not going to affect human beings, but not true. Over time, you do anything enough, it does have an effect on you. So you start eating organic food, number one. That's the first thing, right? Or, or you know, a farmer it doesn't have to be certified organic. It should be if you're in a grocery store, but if you know your local farmer and you know that they don't use that stuff, do that. Um, animal products should always be uh, free range and not necessarily free run, like especially doing chicken. Free run chicken just means that they're still in a barn and they're not outside, but they're just not in cages. You want animals that are outside grazing, eating their, their natural things. So free range animal and free range animal products. And that would be like my staple, right? And um, as far as vegetables, I did a, a podcast or a clip a while ago about podcast or about uh, vegetables that are that are good for testosterone levels. Um, these are any like cruciferous vegetables like Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, um, leeks, these sort of things um, that are good. And the ones that you want to stay away from, of course, is things like soy. Um, that's that's the big one. Stay away okay. from. Okay. Because they have um, uh, xenoestrogens in them, so soy has properties that when you ingest it, it acts like an estrogen to the body. And it's it's with men and women is is the thing is that there's an over feminization. Now you still need a certain amount of estrogen in your system, even for healthy male, healthy strong males and healthy strong females. You still need that, um, but the it's the over Estrogen, estrogenization of society that's really causing a lot of these these problems and and the inability for men and women to not express themselves in their full physical strength capacity is is those things that I just just mentioned. Interesting. I mean, uh, we women seem to to have to make do with this is just my impression with estrogen and accept that we don't get so much of the testosterone 
and um so it makes it it sounds a bit strange if if the soy if women also have to keep away from from estrogen i mean i get <laughs> i keep away from soy uh because of the the estrogen that it kind of produces or yeah. And like I said, it's more of the over feminization of, of, of it uh, or over estrogenization. So if you, like I said, you still need levels, you should maybe get your, your levels checked. But if, if you're high, um, then you want to avoid those things for sure. You want to avoid okay. soy. And my channel, I have about 96% or 98% male views, viewers and 2% yeah. women, but I am a woman, so maybe it's interesting to also just um, talk about uh, women in their forties, um, and you know that you're you're facing. I don't know if you know so much about this because it's not your your area as such, but facing menopause and the fact that that kind of is going to take away some of your estrogen production, and therefore you may lose some of the strength that that also helps with or endurance or whatever. Any, do you know any sort of it's not really, not really my, my forte. I know. <laughs> um, too, too much on that. Um, so I'll leave that one. You uh, leave that one. Just, okay. um, just cause you mentioned the estrogen, I thought I might, might just throw it in there. Fair well, enough. Thing, like sometimes like to, when women get on hormone replacement therapy to, re to replace that it is it's because it's really like what hormones you need to understand is is that they like to operate in a balance of each other yeah right so it's if, if you're low in that then it, it can affect your your testosterone levels as well mm -hmm. because there's something called amortization where the the body can can take testosterone and convert it to estrogen if it's if it's low in estrogen so that's going to knock down your testosterone levels too so hmm. definitely to think about yeah i've heard uh, that beer for example can turn your testosterone into estrogen so yeah so that's through the hops and the, and the hops have um uh uh aromatase uh aromatase that's the enzyme that converts the testosterone to to estrogen so yeah and which sucks because i really like ipas which are like hoppy beers so i just need to, i need to take those uh lightly <laughs> yeah gotta cut down any old beer that's it <laughs> i actually hardly drink any uh, alcohol either um it doesn't interest me enough thankfully so but but i i mean occasionally I'll have a little something to drink but very very little very rarely so i'm a light i'm a lightweight which makes it easy for uh, <laughs> it does. I, I was going to say for me to it's, it's an easy night out but i don't even want to get drunk so <laughs> yeah, Actually, no, I'm, I'm beyond that too yeah it's just not 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 interesting really uh, right so we're running out of time again we've got about another eight minutes and you might have less on your thing there so can wait yeah so derek i don't know if you noticed derek smith he was talking about maybe there being a weight cap partly yeah. so people could be healthier that are arm wrestling because it's like everything is just getting bigger heavier it's just like massiveness and it's maybe fun to watch these monsters on the table i only find it interesting to watch watch a monster be beat to be honest Yes. Like yes. When John beat um, Saplenko, that was that was fun to watch. Um, uh, but yeah, so he was asking, you know, like, what's the future? What you know, <laughs> just like bigger and fatter, and you know, could there be a weight cap? And interesting enough, the weight cap that he suggested was three hundred and fifty pounds, which was his current weight. And he's like, is he six foot? Okay. Six foot eight, I think. He's really big. And he's yeah. talking about a weight cap. Um, I got 30 seconds. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, well, okay. Well, thanks for, we'll, we'll keep that for later and um, I'll see what I can do with what we, what we have. Okay. Away we go. Yeah. So before we were rudely interrupted by the computer dying uh, with yeah. our last, our last uh, interview,
a tent. Yeah. Um, we were talking about weight caps because Derek Smith had uh, suggested a weight cap. Your thoughts? Yeah. So weight caps, they can be hard to implement, um, especially in strength sports. A better uh, thing would be, they're doing some work over there. Let me know if that bothers you. Um, I, I think a better approach would be to introduce an intermediary uh, weight class. So right now, once you're over 250 some odd pounds, you're in the unlimited, what's called the unlimited class, right? Mm -hmm. So you could be whatever. So introducing um, another weight class that would be called the super heavyweights that goes up to 350, right? So the 250 to 350, and then anything above that would be called the unlimited class. But I think that super heavyweight class would be really competitive. Right. Mm -hmm. That would be more my approach to it. Just looking at, uh, at powerlifting and how they do things. Um, there's very few human beings in the world that could really ever get like beyond, I would say like 350 pounds. Right. Unless they're again, like clinically obese. Um, but if they're, even if they're strength athletes, which aren't, renowned for having the best physiques or anything like that but I, I i like your idea and Derek smith's idea of either doing like either the weight cap at 350 or i i think so it wouldn't piss off too many people it would be having another category like the super heavyweight category and again mm. i think that would bring a lot of guys back into competitive placings and make that category really competitive. And it would um, not incentivize guys who are like maybe naturally 300 pounds to try to get as big as they possibly can because they're gonna be in the, the unlimited class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, yeah. I, I think, and De Derek's concern was also about your health. I mean, uh, well, yeah. if you, if you just keep having to get bigger and bigger in order to have a chance against the the other person who decides to get really big, most likely by PD use, then it's gonna it's gonna get out of control. Well, that's it. It becomes a, a battle of, uh, of of chemicals of steroids rather than yeah. You know, because the bigger you are, obviously, if you can lock yourself in to your own body weight and just, I mean, that's what a lot of arm wrestling is, right? It's body weight. You see, like Jerry Cataret, it's like just all upper body, and he gets that hook and presses it, right? Or if you lean back, like it's it's body weight's a huge thing. It doesn't it doesn't just rotate or cuff strength or just arm strength. Your arm has to be locked and be able to hold your own body weight. Yeah. So if you've been Devin Larratt or Gennady or like a few people, and if I started doing this, you'll hold a dumbbell over a bench. And you hold it there and then you just lean forward over it and then you lean back you don't actually do this mm -hmm. and then you're seeing how how much of an isometric contraction you can do basically and that, an isometric contraction is the locking is having it flexed in one position mm -hmm. and and that's it now this would be called an isodynamic because I'm holding it in one position mm -hmm. and then the dynamic or the movement part comes from me tilting my body and changing the, the gravitational pull, but not extending and flexing. I go to a, a club that is part of anti-doping Denmark and um, in my club is a guy called Tony Christensen, whose uh, nickname when he was competitive was the Lone Star and he was very or is still very uh, um, against doping and the use of peds and you can see in his when, when i've heard him talk about it which i might actually include in this uh, clip here um uh, here talking about so this is a natural muscle <laughs> that's natural that's natural yeah. fair yes that's natural. You're natural. <laughs> you want to see something? Yeah. That is the truth. There we go. Doping is cheating. 
So, Copenhagen power poolers, you'll only see natural arm wrestlers yes. here. And I'm just thinking, you know, it's really hard for for athletes to have to choose between being part of what would be called maybe an amateur league or more or less not get any recognition for for the strength that they've built up because the focus is on the uh, untested league, you know? Yes. So the, so I, I was even thinking, you know, what what are the chances that one could have a a drugs tested and untested um, competition side by side in the same? For example, with East versus West, because I'm pretty sure uh, Engen is pro Natty. <laughs> I can't obviously decide for him, but yeah, yeah, I, I I've never heard Engen talk on on it, any of that, but um, but to answer your question. That I know can happen because it does happen in other strength sports. So there's the, okay. it, again, and I always come back to powerlifting because I've got experience with that. But um, uh, so there's one league and it's a single league, but it has two divisions and okay. they call it the, the tested division and the untested division. So they because they started to realize that some people are just going to do it, right? Some people are just going to do it. So the, the untested, you sort of know that the people that are going over towards that one they're using right mm -hmm. um and then in, in the untested uh, or sorry the tested division um yeah you basically you get tested and yeah it's it's so it's two different things but it's under the same uh league it's either called the, the cpl like the canadian powerlifting league or i can't remember it's a different one than i'm competing in right now the one i'm competing in is the the cpu or the the, uh, the ipf which is um it, uh, it's all tested right mm -hmm. but yeah but yes it it can it, it, absolutely and that's a good a good idea yeah because i was just thinking you know east versus west is taking off and it's a it's a good um competition and Engen is opening up for all sorts of unknown people to to compete in it because he wants the best of all weight categories to have a chance to prove themselves and um, hats off for that. Yeah, and I just yeah. think, you know, even under the same the same uh, evening of of competition where you didn't don't need to make a big thing out of it, but just have some athletes that have chosen to be tested and there will obviously be some that <laughs> would prefer not to be tested and just let it happen and you can be in the small type or whatever yep and see how and see how it goes and because like i said there's that in powerlifting and it just came to mind that it's also in bodybuilding so they have the natural mr olympia and they have mm -hmm. the, the natural uh test too and i think that it, it's it's going to pick up i think it already has it's it's almost like what powerlifting did when we used to wear like super suits and everything. And when I got into powerlifting, this so you'd wear this crazy suit, knee wraps, all these all this equipment that you would wear that would make you lift a lot more weight, mm -hmm. right? Those super tight suits. But then people started getting away from that and going back to more what's called raw lifting, where you're okay. just using just a weight belt and uh, some snug knee sleeves, but nothing crazy. And that has totally come back and taken over the sport. <laughs> and why were, why were, I mean, why did it stop? Why did people feel like this was maybe not the way to go? Did they feel it was a kind of cheating? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Snuck>. <laughs> you do these when I, I have my old powerlifting gear. So when I put on a stretch shirt, my arms, like at rest, my arms are out to here. They're being held up. So you knew. <laughs> <laughs> like you need a certain amount of weight to even get the bar to your chest. I needed like at least 200 pounds just to get the bar to the chest. And then you press it up. These, yeah. So That's it, cheating. It, it got out of control. People are like, screw this. And then like when I'm done, like I'd have like cuts here because the stuff is made of like thick Kevlar. Like it feels <laughs> like it would be cut and it would be like, oh, ridiculous. Yeah. I believe with arm wrestling, you're not allowed to have a sleeve on. I don't know if that's a. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 you're not, because the, the ref needs to see things, right? So. Needs to see things, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was wanting to talk about gray zones, because now you were talking about uh, 
there's some fruits and vegetables that can help increase testosterone or whatever, help you increase your chances of building muscle. And uh, I can see how people think, well, you know, if I take a hundred carrots or whatever it is, now carrots is not one of the ones you suggested, but then I will uh, increase my levels. So why not, you know, instead of having to eat all these carrots, <laughs> I should use the one you mentioned, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, then vegetables, but um, yeah, like green surface vegetables. But anyways, finish your thought. Did you my thought. Carrots? <laughs> so then I could just replace it with this simple pill, which is doing the same thing as all these carrots, and I'll save money on all the carrots or be able to eat things that I prefer to eat. So you yeah. can end up with this um this gray zone that's maybe a slippery slide from seeing how you can increase testosterone point in a natural way and replace it by something more straightforward in an unnatural way. Yes. So, but like my thoughts on that? Yeah, your thoughts on that. And I have 10 minutes before we have to reboot. That's okay. So my thoughts on that is just, so what type of person are you? Are you an easy way out type of person? Um, and with carrots, we'll just use carrots. There's always going to be carrots. <laughs> so you're not reliant on some sort of foreign substance that isn't, you know, if it runs out or that company shuts down or whatever, like, what are you going to do? One of the things and like my brand being called the natural alpha is, and I'm trying to do this more too, <laughs> is learn, learn to be more self reliant. Yeah. I don't know why I just laughed. I was just thinking of the carrots could be in your logo. Anyway, carry on. Yeah, right. But and when you're you're more self reliant, you can it's just going out to to what's there. And truly, and I said before earlier in the interview that I'm sort of a nature boy, and I've and I've sort of grew up to harness the power of of nature and in all of these things and believe in it. So I was very much, I have that in my psyche, whereas other people might not be really in tune with mm. nature. And I, I, I think that they would gravitate towards it and, and they don't know the, the, the power that you can harness from it, right? So being more self-reliant, growing your own food. If you can't grow it, um, go to a local farmer who can and eliminating all that stuff. When it gets into testosterone and estrogen and balancing your hormones and optimizing hormones too, if you take away the triggers, a lot of people don't think about taking away the triggers. So triggers would be things that are highly estrogenic. And I mentioned this before, this was the pesticides, the herbicides, all those things. Take those out of your diet and let your physiology regulate itself. Because we're not, if you're not giving that e even a chance, I mean, what do you expect? Um, so th that's one of the things is, is taking that out, get, getting good sleep so that your testosterone and your growth hormone has those giant spikes at night, like they're supposed to. Um, so again, there's, the, the, I got those five foundational principles that I was talking about. I know I sound like broken record, but you actually okay. you, uh, well, yeah, but, but they're, they're sort of um, umbrella terms. There's details to them, but I won't bore you with them people could you can go to my fir very first podcast or i think it's my very first youtube video too right and i talk about like just do this right um but yeah it's nutrition hydration uh sleep exercise and stress management but like those are just the the titles like how you do that varies mm. um between that might be a whole separate uh, show that we can do but yeah uh but again I'll just say, I'll cover nutrition very basically. Like I said, it's taking, getting those triggers out of the way. So getting um, organic as much as possible, free range meats um, as, as much as possible. And if you're going to have vegetables, have those cruciferous green vegetables that have the anti-estrogenic effects and, and balance yourself out, right? And then when you do that, your stress levels go down too, because anytime you ingest something, that your body doesn't know how to handle, it raises your cortisol level as well and throws your blood sugar off. And then you're stressed and then your energy is low. And then you go hunting for ice cream and potato chips because your body's trying to, <laughs> to it, it wants the quickest thing to rebalance the blood sugar because it thinks it's a blood sugar crash and there's and you're stressed and that's stress eating. And then it's a cycle. Oh. 
I could go on, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> good right? stuff. But, right? But, and then that leads to, again, shitty sleep. So then you don't get your testosterone and growth hormone. And then you're even more tired. And you want to reach, again, just for a pill because... You just don't have the the fortitude, the mental fortitude to to do it. Like you've been robbed of your your naturally given, you know, right to feel a certain way. But uh, a lot of people don't really believe in choices that much. They think if if something's on the shelf, then mm. it's okay to buy because my government said it's it's okay. Like mm. you, you know what I mean? And it's like, dude, you gotta. Mm. Now, give me your address because I want to live whatever planet you're living on. But, uh, <laughs> right. Actually, to do with the uh, pills on the shelf, there's also a tendency in arm wrestling to to take painkillers to even before a match in order yeah. to to not feel and yeah. not hear the signals the body's telling. Um, yeah. And that, what were your thoughts on on what you could do about pain so, management that's more healthy? Yeah. Uh, infrared sauna. Infrared saunas are great for helping inflammation complete the inflammation cycle. Inflammation isn't necessarily a bad thing. So if you have like micro tears in your muscles or your tendons or anything, a little bit of inflammation, good. And then it's supposed to complete the cycle, making you stronger, right? So when you get stuck in an inflammation cycle though, right? <laughs> Was it? <laughs> oh, I can hear some kind of boring. Oh yeah, they're changing tires over there. Oh okay. <laughs> work going on on the farm. Um, right. So yeah, so inflammation cycle is is good. I yeah, I've wondered about this because there's been such a, a tendency to put ice on on inflamed areas and and as you're thinking the body is actually in very uh, intelligently created thing and perhaps there's a reason for these um, um yeah. inflammation inflammation stages yes yes it, it, of course and it, it's, it's again it's more when you're just stuck in the middle and it's not healing mm. Right? So that's chronic, it's called chronic inflammation, when, whenever something happens for a long time. So there's acute inflammation, there's like full, complete inflammation. Yep. Like, just think if you, even like the most common example I give is if I actually just sort of cut my skin, it would get red, be inflamed, and then it would go down and it would heal. Great. If I just did like a light cut, right? So that happens on the inside of our bodies, but a lot of times it gets stuck in the red puffy and it doesn't um it doesn't uh complete the cycle and and again it's because we're having inflammatory agents come into our body right that 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 holds it there okay what are so these again, inflammatory agents so uh, the most common ones are what we call the four white devils okay mm -hmm. the four white devils are white flour white pasteurized dairy okay so like white milk white sugar and white salt so a salt that doesn't have like a grayish or a purplish hue to it so if you have like a himalayan salt or a celtic sea salt you'll see it's like gray or purpley and that's because it has all the minerals still attached to the salt molecule too it's more of a whole food but anytime you take anything and you have those things in isolation right and it's just pure white it's 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 void of any nutrition right okay. and and it creates inflammation in the body mm. right like my sister's a good example chronic inflammation she loves going and getting her morning croissants all the time <laughs> and she knows it, right she knows it. god bless her right but uh, and, uh i'm her baby brother so you know uh even though i know my she says, I know you know your stuff, but uh, I got to hear from someone else. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. You were talking about them taking like things like aspirin preemptively, like before the, the match, so that they wouldn't. Ibuprofen. Yeah. While they're pulling. Yeah. Again, it's a common practice with a anything, especially like high intensity strength sports, right? It's a preemptive thing that you 
do, especially if perhaps you're a little older and your joints are worn down a little bit and you haven't been doing the five fundamental principles of maintaining a healthy body, like for sure, right? So there's a okay. great book and anyone who's watching should read something called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Weston A. Price. It totally quantifies the, the, the physical degenerative state of the human being in, in today's world and totally links it to nutritional practices. Um, there, there's more to say on that book, but I'll just quickly sum it up by saying it was written in the 1930s, and this was a very, um, a very good time to do a study like this. So he went around the world to all the continents, and this is where there were still tribes living off of the land. Um, on their native diets and also that the same people, so relatively the same genotype, um, were also introduced to those four white devils that I was talking about. And within those are one black fingers. I, I, just, I started the barbecue. <laughs> While we were on break, I started the, the, the barbecue. So I got it going, right? And four I'm white devils. Yes, yeah, so I know, right? I'm doing a wood smoked brisket, grass fed, grass finished, right? Um, but yes. And within one generation, he saw, it doesn't matter what continent he went to either, within one generation, their, their, especially their facial, physical structures started to change, but all sorts of degenerative things that we know as degenerative disease now um, started to happen and escalate within that time period, within one generation. And the people that st stuck with the, the native foods of the land didn't have any of it. And they had perfect teeth. They had perfect teeth. Um, yeah, all, all those sorts of stuff, but humans are screwed up physically and, and we think it's just, oh, it's too bad that you have that or like you have those genetics or w whatever. No, mm. no, no. Genetics are, are not set in stone. They're like a, like a piano keyboard. It depends on how you play them and which ones you choose to express through your actions, right? So this is, this is called epigenetics. This is this is really it, it's it sucks and it and it um, is great at the same time. It sucks because now you know that you are not just the recipient of disease most of the time, right? Um, so now you have that information, right? Um, but it's great for the same reason. Now you have that information and now you can make better choices. But you can't rely on just saying, "Oh, I've got this." Um, yeah, you have to take responsibility. Yeah, you're, sometimes you're going to be a little bit more predisposed to, to, to something, but you can totally avoid it completely if you just live naturally. I have one response to that that's maybe a little pushback, and that is the the tolerance thing. The body has a, a tendency to also be able to combat things if it's given time to, to learn to manage it. And... Um, and my thought about that is that if you were somebody who never ingested uh, sugar, for example, if you then suddenly did, it would be much more harmful harmful to you than if you were tolerant towards it. Is that is that fair to say? So this this idea of you know allowing certain things to be part of your everyday life so that you have built up a tolerance to it means that you could better manage it or what correct yep i i i, I would agree with that if you're eating sugar and you're doing it for a little bit at a time for a long period of time and you adapt to it was that what you were saying sort of thing yeah and that because it's so happened. sorry and it would have less of an impact as if you went your whole life without it, and then all of a sudden you started to take it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So in our field, we do call that an adaptation, but we call it a maladaptation, meaning you're adapting to something that is lessening you, for lack of a better term, right? Okay. So instead of you're adapting to a lower level of physical existence. <laughs> and yeah, well, it, it, yeah, <laughs> I could be really honest at times, but, but that's what it does. It's, it's a maladaptation. So yes, you get used to 
it. It's like someone living with pain, right? Um, if, if I had a painful leg and I was limping and I just sort of adapted to that, that limp, I, I adapted to the pain by limping. Well, now that's taken me down. Yes, I'm adapted, but I'm not adapted to a, a better spot. I'm adapted to a lower spot. Mm -hmm. And that, and that happens nutritionally too. So you get adapted to sugar. That means, okay, you're okay with your energy levels, your physical strength, and, and that at least a mental and spiritual um, capacities as well, right? In my opinion, but, um, but yes, you can adapt, but adaptation is not always a good thing, is my point. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough. And then um, I had a question about, uh, stem cells they're they're kind of coming into arm wrestling and oh, yeah. people are getting stem cells and i mean devin was quite amusing with it because he's like you know i'm getting addicted to stem cells you know i need to join a, a group and saying my name is devin larrett and <laughs> you saw that, <laughs> yeah, you saw saw that? that. <laughs> yeah it was a good one it was funny but what, what are your thoughts on stem cells as far as i can tell they're still relatively harmless and beneficial. This might be one of those medical breakthroughs that I can jump on board with. Um, yeah, stem cells, they, they help create new healthy cells. Um, and I think, I, I, I'm not really aware of any real consequences or side effects of it, mm -hmm. other than you become addicted to it, like that. <laughs> Right. Or if you just think I can just keep trashing my body and I'll just keep going and getting stem cells. Uh, I don't think that research has been done yet, like a long term thing on 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 an individual taking stem cells. Yeah. <laughs> taking stem cells. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but as far as I can tell, I'm, I'm not really against that. Yeah. I my only concern to start with was if it was ethically sound because of um yeah the issues with whether it was baby baby fetuses you know but but people have been saying well actually it's more the the umbilical cord that is coming from which is somewhat more acceptable to me um, yes but yeah i think i think uh, it's not a necessarily a, a health thing that can be the problem uh, it can be more to do with whether you start to just rely on, oh, yeah, I'll just go and get some more stem cells for that. And you you mentally are less willing to do the hard work and take care of yourself because you have that to fall back on. I think that's where the problem can can arise. Yeah, it's like anything, anything that comes in a needle or a pill that can make it happen like that, as opposed to going through it doesn't even become like what I'm like, look at me right now. Yeah. Does it look like I'm working hard? Um, you know what I mean? It's just a lifestyle. Um, I make sure I get enough adequate sunlight, but I enjoy it. I, I cook my, my meat over an open fire, but I enjoy it. Yeah. It's a little bit harder. It takes more time, I guess, but it's time well enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's, that's a mindset. I wouldn't say it's necessarily hard harder work but it is it is maybe a little bit more time consuming and same thing and i mentioned it before humans are wired for instant gratification and we got to get over that you just have to <laughs> mentally get over that and enjoy the ride smell the roses all that stuff that you were told like make it a reality not just a cliche nice right yeah um yeah, I think that's kind of the, the end of the questions I had for this particular podcast, or well, whatever it's called. I have one last comment, which is rather amusing. I, one of the posts that I made advertising our conversation, somebody's like, about you, it's like, Natty with that neck? And then they had three three laughing faces. So. Well, I saw that and I saw <laughs> your thoughts and you're like, yes, with that neck. <laughs> Dude, so to that guy or person, I say start doing heavy deadlifts. You will get some nice traps, nice trap development, 
and a good neck. Yes. Yes. Believe it or not. Yes. Believe it or funny. not, it's that. And on on that note, actually, I've noticed that in uh, arm wrestling, in the chat, you know, there's anyone who seems to do quite well at something automatically gets, um, you know, the, the the their success is given to PDs, and that's why why it'd be nice to get a bit more of a clear line so that those who really are natty get the credit for it, rather than that's right. It being passed on to the yeah. the drugs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> on that note, catch you later. Yeah. Okay, Leah. Thanks again. This was awesome. It was. Okay. Bye for now. Okay. Ciao. Bye. Bye.